everybody. Josh the RV Nerd here with Bish's RV. Today with a floor plan that was announced forever ago and is finally seeing the light of day, the 184 FQS Catalina. Um, this model right here, you see this layout all over the place, but you almost always see it in a, uh, a more expensive, uh, like higher dollar laminated ultralight, sometimes off-grid or off-pavement or whatever you want to call it model. This isn't trying to be all that, but it comes in at a huge chunk less budget as compared to a lot of those things. But the thing is, it's it's it, it nails so many things that single axle campers often just flat suck at doing. Um, it's between 32 to 3,300 pounds dry weight, which considering it's seven and a half foot wide and as a slide is not bad. Um, the, uh, the RV's carburless, it's easy cleaning, and it has, so single axles almost always really suffer from severely lacking cargo capacity. This has like over 2,200 pounds of cargo capacity on it. It's awesome what they're doing here. Um, the, it also has surprisingly good uh, holding tank capacities for what you may uh, easily call an entry level stick and tin kind of camper or casual level or frankly, just easy level. Like not everybody needs all the fancy glamping features packed into a little trailer. There's some people are like, listen, I just wanna go camping now and then. I want a little bit of space. I want it to feel nice when I get there. I don't want anything too big to tow. I think that this would be an awesome pairing for a decent tow package SUV or something like a, a tow package midsize pickup. Uh, 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 <laughs> the Ford freaking Ranger, by the way, <laughs> So there's the Ford Ranger, and then there's the Ford freaking Ranger. In the Ford freaking Ranger, uh, it, it is uh, uh, engineered with unlimited payload and towing capacity. It also does not exist. But I'm impressed with what they did here. And I would love to hear what you guys think. And if you like sh uh, how we show something for everybody on this channel, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to catch us on the next one around. And in the meantime, let's get dug in there, except Doug still doesn't work here. And I think one of the big things with this RV right here is understanding what it is and what it's going for and what it's not and what it's not trying to be. Uh, you know, you see a lot of, again, this floor plan you very often see in these higher dollar laminated jobs. And with their budget, they can do things this one just can't. It's not trying to be all of that. It's trying to be something for who I call Larry Lunchbucket and Jane Sixpack. And I don't think they, you should have to apologize for that. I just think the understanding is important. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at a six and a half foot tall uh, interior height. And uh, one of the other things they did here that I really like is they went with an aggressive lighting package. They frankly probably could have used half as many lights in this thing and it would have been just fine. But between the lights, the slightly wider body as compared to most single axles and uh, the lighter color palette in general, man, it opens right up in here. And I really like how they treated the slide over here. A lot of manufacturers, they really have a hard time figuring out like, how are we going to enclose or box off or trim out the, uh, the base of that slide out that sits above the wheel well. It doesn't actually go down to the floor. And that right there is a good example of it. Like a lot of times when you see this floor plan, and you see just a jackknife sofa like we're looking at, people go, why can't it have a theater seat? That's why. Because the floor of the slide is already like, you know, 15 inches off the ground. So if you put a theater seat up further in that, your feet would dangle off the back, uh, like uh, dangle off of it like the back seat of your daddy's Studebaker, um, basically is how I like to phrase that. Uh, 13,500 BTU roof air conditioner. They don't have any sort of allowances for a, a side mount air on these, which can pose a problem for some people looking for specific, uh, reduced overall ceiling clearances. Now let's talk about the bedroom arrangement on this. They're doing some things here. I really hope they adopt in the, uh, the bigger eight foot wide Catalinas. I, I, I want your feedback on this. I want to give this to the factory because I have the brand manager's phone number in my phone. I like what they're doing with that wardrobe tower. Now, this is a smaller camper. They didn't do one on both sides. I acknowledge that it's a little imbalanced, but it also means that it's like very wide open and potentially CPAP friendly there. <gasps> you know what else it could do, Shaggy? <laughs> um, you could probably shove a king bed in here, although you're not going to walk around it. Oh, so let's talk about bed size. This is a camp queen bed, but because there's nothing in the way of it, it is true queen capable and that slide can close without hitting a true queen mattress. I will show you that. I'll show you the slide closed in road mode if you hang with me here. But this might actually be like king bed capable. Again, it's going to be a corner king and it might be a little bit hard to make the bed sometimes. Um, 
<laughs> you know, I joke sometimes about how uh, people in the RV might be <clears throat> uh, folding the fitted sheets. Uh, you know what I mean? On the bed? Well, this might actually be time. But what I was getting at, I'm so sorry. I got distracted. I, I really, <gasps> king bed or whatever. I like how they did this um, wardrobe tower over here. You know, the hanging closet. I like how they're, these aren't drawers. I would prefer drawers, but at this budget, I understand why it's just cubbies. I would really like to see something like that on the bigger Catalinas. Now, what's really cool, I kind of teased this in our quick little floor plan in a flash flyby footage. I hope they start doing this little wide open headboard area there with the phone shelf above the CPAP, uh, or, or, or well, space for a CPAP down below. You really need some household outlets back there if you're gonna make it a CPAP station though. Unless, are there USB powered CPAPs? I can't imagine there are, I don't know. I don't use one. I, if anybody has insights on that, I'd love to hear it. But a phone shelf is nice. Those two pills, by the way, I just chucked up there kind of for visual aesthetic. They're actually kind of intended to go on the couch, but holy crap, Batman, those are some big pillows that, like, you know, you could you could suffocate somebody with. Now, one of the things this camper, you got to keep in mind in this class, in this budget, it's not really made to be in, like, we're going to sit in the camper, we're going to watch TV all day kind of thing. The outside of this camper actually has some really cool exterior party kind of functions, but I was at the right-hand sofa seat. If I slide over here to the left, you get a little bit better look at where the TV hookups might be. Now, the thing is, this is a stick and tin camper. And there's a couple benefits to stick and tin campers that do not get enough credit. And two of those things are the fact that um, because the walls aren't all glued and pressed together because there's air in there, you can run wiring in the walls, which is why you see all kinds of power outlets in the sidewalls of this that you don't see in the more expensive laminated models. It's actually easier to put more outlets in better places in a stick and tin trailer like this. So kind of keep that in the back of the memory banks. Um, the other thing is, because it has studs roughly every 16 inch on center, so like 16 inch on center roof studs, wall studs, average 12 inch on center floor studs, 5 eighths floor deck, 3 eighths roof deck. Um, I know I ran through that quickly. Back her up a little bit if you need to. Um, the uh, uh, thing is, there's all kinds of space in here. If you want, if if you don't care about a TV, no, don't don't do anything. If you want a TV though, there's definitely plenty of meat on the bones that you could tap into. And frankly, with as much of a space as we have over here, if you did want to put a big old game day jumbotron in this thing man she, she's got the space and depending on what kind of mount if you put a pivot mount you can watch tv from bed from the sofa it could even be toilet tv certified if you left the door open but <laughs> now using those tv hookups as a reference point here i'm going to attempt to slowly pivot around and if you were laying in bed let's just say on a rainy day you're just Laying on the bed, chilling, lounging, messing with your phone or whatever. This is kind of what you'd look at right here. I like the look of this. It's got a really good look. Now, as long as I'm down here, I got a better angle. Uh, we're going to look kind of straight up. So if you're motion sensitive, again, I'm trying to go slow. But that is a powered vent fan. This is the same thing you'll find in the bathroom. It is a smaller vent fan. It's not like a big XL Max air fan. But the fact that the vent is there... And the wiring is already run. Means if you do want to do some upgrading to a bigger fan, it's easy. Also, usually in a stick and tin single axle camper like this, when you see a ceiling powered vent fan like that, it means that this vent hood over the stovetop does not ventilate hot air outside. That is not true here. That has both the ceiling powered vent fan as well as the stovetop vent hood that does actually exhaust outside. We'll see that again. And as we saw um, earlier, that's a huge countertop. You know, I'm over six foot tall planking on that thing and there's still plenty of headroom above me. I think even if I stretch my arms straight out, it's probably close to eight foot long. I haven't hard measured it, but that is not bad. And once again, this is one of those things where a stick and tin camper is kind of nice. You know, they can put some outlets down low over here. These outlets are kind of being shared. Oh, you can't see them, sorry. These outlets are kind of being shared a little bit between the bed and the kitchen. I would love it if there was one more set of outlets there. That's just a personal preference. Um, but uh, it, it would make for some awesome appliance type stuff. Now, the kitchen does have, I think, one major shortfall. And we're gonna look at that in just a second here. But before I go blowing everything wide open, I actually think I wanna pivot around here, take a look at the uh, the sofa slide. As I discussed earlier, because the sofa doesn't go all the way down to the floor, 
like where the sofa is resting is the bottom of the slide. It's above the wheel well. This is not theater capable. If you'd like this floor plan with a theater seat, we have that from plenty of other brands, uh, mostly on um, tandem axles. Uh, so bigger, heavier, more expensive. But this slide opens it right up in here. And this is one of the things I, I love how it gives us some, some really good space uh, when and where you need it. It also includes a, uh, a free-floating Dynofa table right here if you want to do a little, you know, table dining on a rainy day or that floating table as if you didn't already have a, uh, a huge amount of countertop space over here. You could maybe kind of repurpose that as like uh, an extended uh, kitchen counter. And actually, let me give you a look at kind of simulating that here. So, I mean, depending on where you want to put it, you could, to me, I mean, it almost makes like this big giant peninsula countertop when you need it. That's not too bad, I think. Although it does block that one big cabinet there. It's not that it, it, it's without its hiccups. I'm just saying there's different ways you could use this. And since it's free floating, if you want to take it outside, nothing says you can't do that. Um, and I don't know exactly how big this sofa is. So I'm going to climb on it. Let you see how big it is in comparison to me. It's about this big. And if you notice back here, it also has blackout nightshades. This would have been easier if I just rolled over. So back to the kitchen. Uh, it's like they, they came so close to really having potentially, I think, like a best-in-class kitchen for this kind of floor plan. Um, like the, the, the nice overhead cabinet space uh, you know, extra large. It's it's extra long. You've got a double size cabinet over here. It is pocket screwed cabinetry. You've got a terrifically sized 10 cubic foot 12 volt DC compressor fridge over here. So some serious dry storage, serious cold storage, all kinds of cabinet capacity, but not a single drawer in sight. God bless America. Come on. You know, it just, oh, it was... It was, it was so, so close. Now, this is an interesting little look right here. There's space, like that big cabinet door, that's like the size of an RV oven. So you go, well, is there an oven option? And I can tell you without even looking, no, there is not. And I know that because they went with the uh, two burner stove top here. If um, these countertops, basically, they have to all be really specifically sized out. And it's hard for manufacturers to have like multiple versions of the same countertop in their parts catalog. So they standardize one countertop. Since they went with a two burner stove, there's not a two burner stove and separate oven really available out there in the RV industry. So even though it's oven sized, it just doesn't have an oven. So my cookies and biscuits fans, this may not be the right one for you. That is not a convection microwave oven either. Again, this is a more simple series trailer. If those are the kind of things you're looking for. Um, you know, a 19 FBS GeoPro might be a really good alternative. Now, um, I almost forgot to talk about this. It's something Catalina does I love, and I love that they still do it here at their small trailers. These 12 volt refrigerators. Now, the RV has a battery disconnect, but sometimes you wanna be able to run some lights and stuff. You're just kind of getting the camper packed up. You don't want the fridge running, eating your batteries, whatever the case may be. It's nice to be able to have a little more control over these. This looks like a light switch for the entry door. Those are actually located right over here uh, around the corner at the command panel. That is actually a kill switch just for the fridge. Like, nobody does that. I wish more brains would do that with their 12 volt fridges. I think that's, it's just a smart thing. I love that I have the ability to decide yes or no with the flick of a switch, do I want that thing on or off? because not every 12 volt fridge has a kill switch on the inside. Now this one I'm looking at happens to, but sometimes when parts come short on an RV, manufacturers have to seek alternate suppliers. Not every fridge is going to operate like this one. So having that extra switch right there, really just good forward thinking from Catalina on this one. And I wanna give them a little bit of credit over here. Like I said, they, in this class, what they didn't do, I understand based on the, the the price points and everything. But finishing that off the way they did, that is nice. That is really nice. They really cleaned that up very nicely, I think. Um, bathroom in here, I was shocked. And this is where I think the seven and a half foot wide body works nicely. There's awesome space around that toilet. It, awesome hip, shoulder, elbow room, everything. This bathroom... It's it just doesn't suck. <laughs> yeah, 
it, not in the way that I kind of expected it. And I think largely it's because they went with a shower curtain, not a hard enclosed corner shower, um, which, you know, it just makes visibly everything looks larger. One thing though, and again, I'll tell you the good with the bad. That's one of the things that I'll, I'll commit to doing for you here at Bish's RV. It doesn't have a skylight of any variety. Uh, as to why, well, I, I called Catalina on that and here's what they told me. Basically, right here above my head, did you hear how solid that was? Did you see how the ceiling didn't buckle and wiggle under my hand? Even It ain't like I'm strong or anything, but you know, panel will move if I push on it. There's a roof truss, there's a stud right there. Um, you know, it, it, you could use a stud finder, you could find it, you can verify yourself. Remember though, to calibrate it first, you gotta hold it up to your chest, guys, go, yup, there's one. <laughs> Now, flip it around the other way, actually starting in the shower, taking a look at the RV with the slide closed in road mode. By virtue of the fact that we're in the bathroom and can clearly get to the door, that does mean that the bathroom is going to be uh, easily travel accessible. The kitchen is fantastic for travel stops. This is actually a floor plan. I wonder if there's not room for a manufacturer to build something like this with no slide out. I, I could see it. It still feels big enough in here to me, and maybe because that seven and a half foot wide body on this one uh, still helps. Now, a couple things. One of the questions people might have is, yeah, but what do you do with the table when you're traveling? So I, I kind of gave you an idea right here. Um, I left it sticking out a little bit, but if uh, you lift up the mattress, putting that table under the mattress in transit is a great way to keep it from jiggle banging all over the place and crashing and bashing stuff up all over. Um, the other thing I want to showcase here is with the slide closed, yeah, we can easily walk around. But remember I said this is True Queen capable and that's a Camp Queen. Even if you went with a True Queen bed, it still wouldn't interfere with the slide fascia. So once again, it is a Camp Queen mattress, but this is a True Queen capable floor plan. And considering the way most people replace mattresses, I, I think that that's a, a, a legit point worth considering. Now, one of the things I've mentioned a bunch of times already in this video, and I'm going to mention it at least one more right here, is the fact that this is seven and a half foot wide. That's the same body size as something like those embers over there. So, like, that's a good example. If you're looking for all the upscale amenities, yeah, we got that here in the ember. But for, like, half the cost of that or less, you could look at this Catalina over here. But there's definitely a difference in those products. Um, now, something that's far more comparable might be something like a wolf pup over here. And when you kind of see them side by side, you see the difference between that seven foot body and the seven and a half foot body. It doesn't sound like much, but when you actually get into it, you see it, you feel it, it makes a difference. And it, I think it was really obvious in the road mode function of this, even with the slide close, man, it's just easy navigation through here. You know what I mean? It's subjective. I like the color palette. Some people might not like the Labatt blue stripes, but it is kind of what it is. I want to uh, address something here too. I get a lot of feedback on this. People say, oh, I, I would like it, but I can't get over those white doors. Yeah, they definitely do not exactly match i understand that they are actually a light gray and i think they might be white on the inside yeah so that gives you a little bit better contrast and comparison so why aren't they using color matching baggage doors that's a fair question and the short answer is because there's not a supplier that exactly color matches the uh baggage door right there against the fire or the uh the aluminum skin color that they're using on this that is a big pass through dude whoa did you notice too Magnet hold back on that. Nice little touch you don't expect to see on something like this. Um, that Actually, I'm looking around and I'm seeing, uh, I, I don't see a whole lot of other stick and tin single axle campers with an eye shot that are doing that. There are some certainly, but not a lot of them. Uh, again, one of the things that really impressed me on this was the holding tank capacities. When I'm looking at single axle stick and tins like this, I, I, I understand that there's more of a budget involved here and especially things you can't see like holding tanks, manufacturers are inclined to scale back on uh, because a lot of times when people are shopping this market segment, they're shopping a price tag. Catalina was really smartly focused on this, which is why I think instead of calling it starter class, I think this is a good example of a smarter class camper. And I get that that's kind of tongue in cheek phrasing and sure that's cute that you came up with that guy, but I think you get what I'm saying, right? Um, the little foot peg or uh, foot pad, as it were, on the tongue jack is a nice touch as well. A couple little, you know, end user care and consideration factors. Battery disconnect on a single axle camper. More and more of them have them, but not everything does. I, and remember, the fridge separately disconnects. Now, let's talk about what about like weather packages and stuff like that. 
this this ain't made for all that this is spring summer fall camping uh this is not extreme weather camping right here underbelly has no specific enclosures or protections or anything like that that is not what this one is about that's pretty standard in this class and in this budget point though I, I don't know when, but apparently I bumped the power button, so pardon me. But anyway, getting back here. The RV's not exactly level right now, so it looks like there's more ground clearance below the sewer hookups than there actually are. That's one of those things I'm not going to uh, intentionally mislead somebody into uh, even lying by omission. Even if I just showed it and didn't talk about it, I would feel wrong about that. So just kind of keep that in mind. That being said, I don't think the clearance is terrible by any stretch of the imagination. And I, I also want to offer one other point of consideration right here. You see rear stabilizer jacks. Looking up front, I do respectfully uh, feel that this is a miss that there are not also front stabilizer jacks. That being said, those are frankly a very easy add-on that we could apply here for you. So if that's the only thing you need to feel good about this camper, give us a call. The roof is walkable, but as is the case with all Catalinas and almost any single axle trailer out there, especially single axle stick and tins, it does not have factory allowances for a ladder, neither um, aftermarket uh, nor from the factory. One of the things it does allow for though, a little bit of outdoor fun and the door side of this one is pretty nicely outfitted i think for a small trailer you got the handy little leash latch now that's good for more than just pets um or drunken uncles as i often like to say but um you know t tying up like a bicycle or something like that just to make it one step harder for somebody else to grab it uh little things like that you don't think about but thieves are lazy, and if you do even the smallest thing to deter them, it tends to work pretty nicely. Um, uh, I, I've seen a lot of instances of that over the years. Also, a gas girl quick connect over here, or since it's off the side, she's a propane cooker hooker. Uh, if you want to add a, and it's right over here, you, you could choose to cook under the awning or maybe behind the RV, off the back of the RV, not under the awning, wherever you feel comfortable doing it. And they put the biggest awning on this they possibly could, which uh, is awful darn nice here. And um, if I'm not mistaken, they are still using the uh, multicolor, like multi-pattern, like party lights on the outside of this thing. Or you can just take the strobe off if you don't want to induce a seizure in your neighbors. Um, which, you know, I say lightheartedly, not really something to joke about, but, uh, you know, if, if you don't want to bother the neighbors at night, if the party's over, you can dye it down to just one color or change the swell pattern on it or whatever. Since this does sit a little higher, since it's running on a bigger axle, a little bit heavier chassis, they did go with the double step, which is cool. Now, if you would prefer the fold down stable steps, again, that's an upgrade that we could easily apply for you right here. The door does look to be wide enough. The bigger handle's a nice touch. Again, single axles don't always have that. I harp about it all the time. The outside speakers aren't my favorite spot, but I do like the tinted windows and the fact that the stovetop vent hood does ventilate heat outside. That's an easy thing to overlook. And in a little camper like this, even a small, quick kitchen cook really quickly heats things up. Kind of like the way my microwave cooks Hot Pockets. It don't take long to get the center of those things hotter than the surface of the sun. In case you hadn't guessed, I burned my tongue in a Hot Pocket earlier. Now, one last note. Catalina actually makes this floor plan kind of two ways. This is the Summit 7 version. Basically, the, this is the uh, the straightforward model. If you're looking for a little glitz and glitter, if you're looking for like, uh, you know, maybe a, a tire lift or you're looking for some level of solar or enhanced um, off pavement capacity. I don't want to say off road. I think that presents a different picture, but off pavement capacity. That's when you might want to look into the expedition version of this floor plan. They kind of build it two ways. Um, and if you like what you see here, but you're like, well, do they have something like that with bunks? They do. I'll leave you a link in the video description. And if you'd like to be able to compare this against some of the other more ritzy glitzy models, I'll leave you links for those in the video description. And I'll leave you a link to check for pricing and availability to see where we have one of these in stock and what we're asking at any given time. One click away, you never have to call and give up your grandmother's maiden name or anything like that. But when you are ready, we are ready. So until then, though, take care, stay safe, have fun, and best wishes from Bishes, everyone.